Hello everybody, it's me Roscoe, and welcome to another video verdict. The first of the 2024-25 season. It's just town, of course, in the Premier League. I'm here with AJ. We're back at Portland Road as uh, the Blues lost 2-1 against German outfit Fortuna Dusseldorf, oh, yeah. um, second tier side. Um, this is actually going to be the last time we're going to film in this spot because... Uh, as far as we're aware, at least. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm maybe sh shooting a gun there, but... Um, what was it like being back at Portland Road, first of all, AJ? We'll talk about the game. It, the game happened. But, um, yeah, what's it like being back at Portland Road? A different position for you. Yeah, a little bit strange. It's a bit sad to think that we're not going to be back in that press box ever again. I can't lie. It was not the perfect press box. There's a lot of pillars. And having spoken to people today, we're going to be further forward, which is nice. We're not going to have as many pillars, but we were in one of the executive boxes today, or one of the direct ones, which I'm assuming maybe some of the fans might have been in potentially nice little view there slightly to the side um i'm not really tall enough to like properly be able to work on the little ledge there because obviously you're not supposed to and i oh, people next to me that couldn't do it so we're all kind of like this trying to type it was um, a little bit tricky but yeah a bit of a weird experience i think it's only going to get weirder isn't it really yeah. when we look at how this is going to go over the next few weeks ahead of the the big kickoff against liverpool which will be at least for us to our next time here yeah. which is weird to think uh um, obviously Stu's going to be covering the Nice game in a couple of weeks but yeah it's it's slightly bizarre and a bit sad in the way it must yeah. be but especially sad for you having done this for a long long time yeah obviously I don't go there you know up there on pitch side most of the time but um, yeah I'm sure same with this room though, yeah like this room the amount of times I've got media scran and had a nice chin wow with Patrick and co um, but yeah end of an era but into a very exciting era hmm. at Portland a lot of work happening um, let's talk about the game then um, pre-season is pre-season all about the minutes uh, as I said 2-1 defeat Dusseldorf took the lead early lead as well yeah I kind of expected this in the way and you've got to bear in mind it's the huge caveat to all of this Fortuna Dusseldorf are much further ahead in terms yeah. of their preparations they kick off next weekend with a home game on a trip trip to Darmstadt who I believe were in the Bundesliga last mm. year so it's going to be a tough game for them they need to be as good as they're going to be, essentially, whereas Town is going to be that rustiness. They've had a camp and they've they've played against a good side in, in Shakhtar Donetsk, but they're coming up against a side that are further along in their preparations, and, and that's OK. I think there's frustrations of how that first goal came about. It's a really nice cross from their midfielder. Could have been closed down a bit quicker, I yeah. think, but again, it's what you expect with that kind of pre-season rustiness. And then again, the striker, uh, which one was it? Danny Schmidt getting in the middle of kind of the two defenders to head into the ground. Not really much Muric could have done about that. Funnily enough, I think that's the first thing Muric did in the town yeah. shirt was um, pick the ball out of the net. I like his pink kit. I nice. do. like yeah. the pink kit. Oh, there you go. There you go. Pink Actually, kit. Yeah. Not quite the same colours, but yeah. So I, I like that. I thought that worked quite well. Um, as for the goal, yeah, it's a frustrating one. It's one that Kim McGann is not going to linger on. As he said after the game, you can't even prepare for these. You know, you don't sit here and... Um, analyse Fortuna Dusseldorf and their strengths and weaknesses like they're going to do with all their Premier League opponents. It's just a different kind of preparation. So you can't really overanalyze it too much, but it will be one with after the back. It was a bit frustrating, yeah. yeah. They were actually doing that in their warm-up for Fortuna Dusseldorf. So they were preparing for it and they did score from it. So there yeah. we go. Uh, there was a negative, though, in the first half as well. Wes Burns mm -hmm. came off injured. What do you know? Do you know any more, McKenna? Spoke to you after the game. A little bit. He's rolled his ankle. Um, looked quite innocuous at the yeah. time, I thought. I don't know how near you were, but he collided with... Funnily enough, I think it was Schmidt that he oh. collided with as well. Oh, him again. Schmidt's Danny! Bring him, mm. bring him to Portman Road. Yeah. Uh, it's town needs a striker. There you go. Um, so, yeah, that's a, a disappointing one. He tried to play on through it, and I watched him for the first kind of five minutes, and he was really limping, and he kind of shook it off. It took him quite a while, and then... Yeah, he went down again on the half hour mark and the change needed to be made it was Marcus Harness who came on and wow I mean I don't know about you but Marcus Harness for me in the minutes he had on the pitch was probably the best player yeah yeah, so I think Sam Morsey got the sponsors man the match, but um, fair enough. I, yeah. I get it. Yeah, you know, he played well. But He's everywhere, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we might as well touch on Marcus Harness yes. now because it does lead on to what happened after. That. I think the town grew into the game yeah. quite nicely. They enjoyed a bit more time on the ball. They weren't really creating chance. I felt a bit sorry for Liam Delap up front because he was just working with next to nothing, really. But as soon as Marcus Harness came on, created a chance, I think first, first seconds on yeah. the ball, um, created a similar opportunity down the right again soon after that. Um, just looked so lively, so threatening. 
testing the goalkeeper from narrow angles. That's what you want. I think he came on with a bit of a point to prove. I think that there is a bit of a chat around him. Is he at the level of playing mm -hmm. a Premier League footballer? Even as a someone that's going to come on and, and be the kind of the super sub, is he at the level to do that? I've, I've doubted that. I think there's probably others who, who have and will doubt him in that role, but he came up there and really proved he's capable of doing it. I thought he was excellent today. And then gets his goal. I was down the other end of it because yeah. we kind of shifted to one side a little bit. A nice strike from him, low, uh, curled with was a left footed, just kind yeah. of curls it into the box. That's when at half time, of course, McKenna made a few changes. George yeah. Hurst came on, mm. and a few other players. Um, and yeah, Marcus Arnas, good little finish. I think three minutes Hurst, after the restart. Yeah, I think. I think it was a couple of minutes after Hurst's yeah. hold up play is quite good. Sets up Chaplin, brings it in, and it's a nice flick to, to set up Harness. It's what they lacked in that first half a lot. Looked a little bit disjointed at times, which. Again, understandable, you bring new signings in, all four of the new, new players, so not Amari Hutchinson, yeah. all, all started this game, and maybe just took them a little while to get up to speed, but then when you're looking at Marcus Harness combining with George Hurst, with Connor Chaplin, it's, it's your bread and they butter, each other, Ipswich yeah. Town. Um, lovely silky football is such a nice move yeah um, I will admit I actually missed uh, Dostorf's uh, second goal because Brilliant. I was editing photos I put in photos in a system for you to use my friend so uh, <laughs> you'll have to talk me through it and talk to people who weren't in the game as well oh yeah that's a struggle because I kind of looked up and saw this Ball, happen it? almost so it's really really good this this was Tim Rossman this was an, I think it was an unannounced substitute they took off um, Shinta Applecamp who was a kind of alluded to in a few bits before again I'm a really massive fan of him he was playing on the left and got subbed off for Tim Rossman who just had this bizarre hey, Rossman sorry, sorry. It, it's, it's a double S on my screen here but it's the like the German oh, thing that yeah, looks like a yeah, B BR. god we're all over the place in this video I love it um, rustiness this is pre-season we have to you know yeah carry on don't worry Germany Austria is going to be even more fun next week um, yeah this just felt very similar to the Maidstone game Way, mm. where it was just a quick break and it just came from nothing it was a bit bad positioning I think Ben Johnson got caught a little bit high he's not someone that was playing high actually if you look in the early stages of the game he was staying really far back and, and being that defensive right back playing in that role to allow Wes Burns to push on and Leif Davis on the other side all the trademark McKennaisms that yeah. we know um, just gets caught a bit high and it's a, a through ball as far as I'm aware <laughs> as far as I can remember from yeah. it um, gets played clean through and left Christian Walton yeah, high and dry there. Now. He came on, so he was one of the substitutions with Murich coming off. And then, yeah, it was Hurst on, the lap off. And then it was the two centre-backs that changed, so Wolfie and Burgess playing the second half of that game. Um, and that's what made it 2-1. And oh, if you don't mind me jumping the gun a bit, I don't think yeah. there was anything else after that. I think there were a handful of chances in town. Yeah. looked a little bit better towards the end. And Freddie had a couple of chances. He came on, played on the left, which was interesting. I think it's more of a sign that town have no options out wide that at the moment the, uh, um, than, the, you know, any chance of us seeing Freddie Ladapo playing Premier League football as a left winger. Um, so, yeah, it kind of ended a little bit damp and, yeah, but still the players got applauded off and the There's final shootout. <laughs> yeah, and, well, yeah, we'll go on to that, but the, the players, I thought, just looked a bit tired towards yeah. the end. They're playing against a side that's fresh and ready to play a full 90 and, and they just kind of passing the ball around and that was kind of it to yeah. be honest and then yeah on to the shootout yeah um, shootout was um, where the South Al Ramsey stand was so I was the other end so I just sort of I just watched it and just just chilled really yeah, that's why there's no photos of the yeah, penalty shootout yeah I have to admit um, obviously Chaplin missed the first one then yeah. they missed one didn't they I think did uh, Moulton save it Hoffman, yeah, yeah it was Hoffman the right back's penalty that was uh, saved and then it was followed up by Goals. five perfect penalties after that I'd I'm not sure about perfect penalty. It almost felt like some of them were being taken in slow motion. Pick of the bunch, George Hurst for me. Yeah. That was a really good one there. Burgess um, basically just wellied it and hoped for the best. Gosh. It hit the crossbar and yeah. in. So it, um, Jack Taylor who did the really yeah. silly run up and the goalkeeper saved it and it kind of yeah. looped up. Enough power in it, yeah. It was like the world's worst penalty shootout where uh, like it was good because they all scored yeah. apart from Chaplin and, and Zimmerman. Um, well, not from Zimmerman. And it, it just was a bizarre experience yeah. but hey, it's good to have them. Wolfie and obviously Mike missed it though yeah. Wolfie missed Wolfie it, was missed it. Um, kind of a side footed low yeah. effort funnily enough I did not think I was anywhere near the worst penalty <laughs> that was taken <laughs> in that shootout um, 
And then their goalkeeper who saved it then went up to take the winning penalty, which he absolutely slapped yeah. in. Fair enough. So, you know, we're all right. Fair enough. Fortuna Dusseldorf, you've won your game, you've won your shootout. Hope you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure they, they enjoy themselves. Like the Fortuna fans are fantastic. Yeah, shout out to them. You know, brought the atmosphere. And, you know, it's 15,000 plus at Port One Road for a pre-season game. That's pretty good good going for the numbers. We know that town fans come in force with this with this team. They know what they're going to expect. Obviously, today, AJ was all about just fitness. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, they're going to build it up going when they go to play their two games in Germany slash Austria. Um, some bad news, though. We, we'll get right into that right now. We heard about Nathan Broadhead. Yeah. Um, two months. At least two yeah. months. It was two months minimum was what Kieran McKenna said. So he's not got to go and have surgery, which is good. It probably means that they'd hope to get him back nearer to the two months and say three, four, whatever. As you know, hamstring injuries can be bad. Look at George Hurst, for example. Um, but two months means he's going to miss pre-season. He will miss quite a bit of the start of the Premier League campaign. And that is an area where town are looking light. We know they tried to get Jaden Philogene. There have been rumours with Jack Clark. We know that Sammy Smodix is a target. Players like that. But it is definitely an area where they're looking light. We're talking about one winger. If you're looking at maybe not having Nathan Broadhead there for a couple of months, could it be that Town might need more or or at least versatile options? Yeah, starting to look a bit thin. Yeah. Um, Any other business then, my friends? Um, As we're heading to Germany, we're going to look Mm -hmm. forward to that, bring you more great content. I hope you enjoy that. But uh, anything else from the game? Um, I mean, the injury stuff is going to be the, the next to look at. Harry Clark is probably the furthest away, but at least there's good cover in his position. Um, I think Axel's going to be expected back quite soon as well, so he can come and cover that position. Uh, and then from there, I'm trying to remember the other ones, Ali Alhamidi getting a bit nearer, Cameron Humphreys getting a bit nearer, Wes Burns will obviously have to wait and see. Mari. Um, and then Amari, they expect hopefully to play a part in the Germany games. He's been handling a little niggle, so we'll have to wait and see how they all get on, but I'd imagine the bulk of them will travel to Germany slash Austria. Kieran McKenna said they're kind of staying around an hour from each location, so they're somewhere in the middle, yeah. somewhere on the border was what he said uh, when we spoke to him before the game and he spent the interview trying to get a bug off my arm, so that was <laughs> a fun experience. Yeah. But yeah, um, we'll have to wait and see what happens with those injuries. Fingers crossed they can get a few back pretty quickly, but the squad's looking a little thin and he's very keen that this club gets business done. He knows it needs to be done and he's aware that there is quite a sizable chunk that needs to happen, which is exciting because they've already spent a good mm. amount of money and hopefully there'll be more to come. Indeed. Well, thanks for joining us. We're going to, I think, going to get kicked out now by <laughs> uh, the very nice security man who uh, allows us to film here. But this is the last time we're going to film in this spot. Oh. Um, so bring on Liverpool because next time we're going to be here at Portland Road. But let's bring on Germany. We'll enjoy that trip. <laughs> See you then. Bye-bye for now.